Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new discovery or in some sense rediscovery of one of the most distant galaxies in the universe that we've discovered to date. We're going to talk about the so-called Mambo 9 and how we found it and what it means to science. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to discovering far galaxies, there are quite a lot of record holders actually. The most distant galaxy that still kind of holds that record is known as GNZ11 and it can be found in the location that you see right here on the screen. And the thing is, it's pretty far away. It's um, about 32 billion light years away from us. And um, it currently holds the record for the farthest galactic object we've discovered. It's a lot smaller than the Milky Way. It's obviously much, much younger because we're technically looking 13 billion years in the past. But this is sort of what we've uh, observed. Here's the thing though, we don't really know the exact true shape of this galaxy, simply because of the way it was discovered. Just like every other really distant object we've found so far, or at least most of them, we've relied on something known as the gravitational lensing effect. The effect that's formed when a massive object in front of another object creates what's known as a gravitational lens, and uh, we get to see what's also known as an Einstein ring. Here's probably one of the most famous images of such an effect and the so-called Einstein ring. So this here is a lot brighter, it's a lot easier to see. It's an object that's behind another object. But the thing is, we don't really uh, know what the shape is. We just get, kind of get to see this distorted light from it. And it's really difficult to reconstruct the original picture. Here's a slightly more realistic representation of what we usually observe when we detect these really far away objects. So as you can see, we do get to see light from this distant object, which is exactly what happened with GNZ11, but we don't know what its shape is. We can only speculate about certain uh, parameters of the actual galaxy, and um, except for the potential determination of the total size of the galaxy, we have no idea what it looks like. But now we've discovered something by directly observing it, and this is where it gets really interesting. So we didn't really use a gravitational lensing effect, and instead, what you see right here is a direct image from the instrument known as MAMBO. And before you ask why it's called MAMBO, here's the answer. So this is actually part of this beautiful telescope in Spain, and it's a device that's able to detect various heat emissions from objects really far away in space. And what's interesting is that we've detected MAMBO 9, the galaxy itself, a long time ago, we just didn't really know what the distance to it is, because every time we used a different telescope to try and to look at it again, we couldn't see it. It was invisible to every other telescope, until very recently, in 2019, when we were able to detect it with the NASA's ALMA Observatory, um, that's also known as Atacama Large Millimeter Array. So these uh, telescopes were finally able to detect uh, this particular galaxy, and this allowed us to calculate the distance. And the distance is big. Not as big as the previous record holders, but still very, very big. With the rough estimate to this object being approximately 23 billion light years, or possibly even more. So here the distance is quite dramatic. This is literally the farthest galaxy we've seen directly. And what's interesting is that unlike previous distant galaxies we've seen, this one is not smaller than the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, it is much more massive, much larger, and has way, way more star production and stars themselves. And more specifically, if you were to kind of try to recreate all of this gas and turn it into star formation, it would look something like this. This would be a very powerful, very active, very bright galaxy, which is probably why we were able to see it from such a far away distance. And because this was not a gravitational lens galaxy, we got to observe its shape, and we can even see that it has two parts, very likely two different galaxies colliding, forming one really, really massive, really large galaxy. Now, from all of the galaxies we've seen so far away, um, basically early on in the creation of the universe, we've learned that most of these galaxies are usually really small, they're not exceptionally large, many of them are spiral, many of them have irregular shapes, because this is basically where all of the galaxies were being formed. But if you were to compare them to what we see around us today, for example, the very famous M87 galaxy, 
you would find um, something completely different. You would find an elliptical galaxy. So today we believe that this is more or less evolved ancient galaxy as opposed to the younger irregular shaped galaxy that we were able to observe something like 900 million uh, years after the creation of the universe. So basically this is the baby galaxy right here. With the main exception being that while most of the other early baby galaxies we've seen are sort of like this, this galaxy is like walking into a kindergarten and seeing a humongous kid in the middle of these small children. So Mamba 9 galaxy is definitely a bit of an outlier. It's a gigantic baby galaxy that's forming a very large amount of stars with a somewhat irregular shape but a lot of activity on the inside. And here we believe that it has about 10 times more stars than in our own Milky Way, even though it's exceptionally young. Back then, um, basically 13 billion years ago, Milky Way must have been really, really tiny in comparison. And also one of the reasons why we couldn't really easily see it um, until very recently is because of all of the star formation here. And all of this is, of course, because of the dust in present in the galaxy. This dust is essentially what's hiding it from us, and so trying to detect this galaxy in visual light is exceptionally challenging. And although normally the ancient galaxies that we've seen so far are much more blue in color, they're also uh, full of stars and a lot of really bright stars, this galaxy, Mamba 9, despite its relatively large size, seems to possess a lot more dust than stars. Which to some extent suggests to us that there is definitely a lot of importance in these early dust galaxies in the formation of early universe. And even though we still are not entirely sure how such a galaxy was able to form so early in the universe, or why it has so much dust, we definitely now see that these early massive galaxies had a lot of activity in them and a lot of star formation. The star formation here was about a thousand times uh, higher than it is today in the Milky Way galaxy, so all of these early stars were being created and destroyed very, very fast and produced a lot of other materials that very likely spread across the universe afterwards. As a matter of fact, the scientists behind this paper suggested that this is probably one of the most active stellar nurseries so early in the universe, allowing the creation of a vast amount of stars and generating a lot of heavier elements that probably spread throughout nearby galaxies afterwards. And although we can only imagine what such a galaxy would look like today, it would not really be surprising if that galaxy did not turn into something similar to this right here. This is the famous M87 galaxy, where we were able to take a picture of a black hole back in April of 2019. And this is actually one of the most massive, most populated, and one of the brightest objects in the nearby space to us. So in that sense, maybe this is how M87 was created as well. Creating tons of stars, generating a lot of energy, uh, combining all of this dust into stars, and eventually settling in a shape known as elliptical galaxy, while also having a super ultra massive black hole in the middle that we were able to take a picture of. But for now, that's kind of all we know about Mambo 9. Unfortunately, this is probably the most accurate picture we'll be able to take for quite a while now, simply because we don't really have any more powerful telescopes looking in this direction. And although it's very likely we'll find more um, farther galaxies and more interesting galaxies out there by using the gravity lens effect, it is very unlikely that we'll be able to directly see another distant galaxy anytime soon. This was pure luck, and we were able to discover this simply because it was just a very massive and very active galaxy early in the universe. We don't know if there is more out there, but I guess time will tell. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.